Good evening, and welcome to Ross Time Park for tonight's game between the New York Haberdashers and the home side Chicago Tea Toddlers. At this time, we'd like to introduce the batting order for the visiting New York Haberdashers. Batting first, the left fielder number eight, Stump Phillips. Batting second, the center fielder number seven, Hubie Guzel. Batting third, the right fielder, number 22, Joe Nelly. Batting fourth, the first baseman, number 29, Gauze Blacksmith. Batting fifth, the third baseman, number 46, Boob Jenner. Batting sixth, the second baseman, number 23, Trevor Knockmore. Batting seventh, the shortstop, number 16, Stokely Hathaway. Batting eighth, the catcher, number 12, Doug Lumps. And batting ninth, the pitcher, number 37, Bonky Gorman. And let's make some noise for the home side, the Chicago Teetotlers. Please give a good cheer as we welcome them to the field. The right fielder, number 23, Umpty Pool. The first baseman, number 13, Crispy Yellow. The catcher, number 14, Moopy Pound Cake. The shortstop, number 42, Bowtie Harvey. The second baseman, number 35, Cowie Bangett. The third baseman, number 11, Ainsley Snickwacker. The left fielder, number 30, Dada Frosty. The center fielder, number 12, Ren Bugby. And taking the mound, your starting pitcher tonight for the Chicago Teetotlers, number 20, Split. Hammond. Let's give a good dry cheer for our tea toddlers as they get ready to play ball. Good evening to you all, and welcome to Rothstein Park for tonight's game. Already the New York Haberdashers on the, on the uh, not on the board, but on the uh, on base with a single from Stump Phillips. Call he is leading the league in home runs, and that's going to be Hubie Guzel striking out, looking. On the mound tonight for the P-Tartalus Split P. Hammond, a rookie from the National Fire, gets Joe Nelly swinging at that one for strike one. Doesn't make good contact, movie pound cake makes the throw to Yellow at first. It does move Stum Phillips the second, however it is two outs. Bring up Gauze Blacksmith, the first baseman. That's going to dribble right to Cowie Bang it at second base. Throw in time, and that will do it for the top of the first. One hit, one stranded, no score. Bottom of the first on the mound for New York today is Bonky Gorman. Not the best of starts to the season. The ZRA is 417. Got a record of two and three in six starts so far. Just face Umpty Pool, who after fouling it off twice will get on base with a single that's gonna go all the way to left field. Stump Phillips making that one in left field for the Haberdashers. And this brings up Crispy Yellow. Crispy Yellow batting 379 this season. And he's going to hit to a fancy damn double play. To bring up out two and bring up Moopy Pound Cake. Of course the Fancy Dan double play brought to you by Fancy Dan Follicle Products. Put more fop in your cloth with Fancy Dan. You can try their assortment of gelatin based Tonics, styling salves, sculpting epoxies, and of course, crimping, crimping powder. Does why be a Mitchell when you can be a fancy Dan? Well, the catcher movie Pound Cake is on first. He was walked by Bunky Gorman. 
Japanese third walk of the season, so not too frequent that it does that. It does leave Botai Harvey to line it right to Yuri Bozel, and that is out number three. So, similarly, one hit, one stranded. No score. We had to the second inning. We welcome you here to Rastime Park in Chicago, Illinois. My name is Hapa Baloney. You're listening to WMAQ. The New York Haberdashers enter this game 14 and 12. Chicago, a couple of games behind them, 11 and 15. New York, five games behind the league leading New Ohio Debonairs as Boob Jenner flies that one out. Too better thrusty in left field today. This brings up Trevor Nakmore. Nakmore batting 368. He's going to ground that right to bang it. Should be an easy throw. It is, in fact. And that is out number two to Stokely. Half away. A back and forth battle this entire uh, series between these two teams. Chicago did get the win 5 to 4, the final score. Uh, that was um, just yesterday, two days ago. New York won the first game of the series. That was, of course, popped up into, uh, into left field and Thirsty with a catch. And a 1 2 3 inning. Bottom of the second, it is Cowie Bangit starting things off. He's going to be on with a single. That's going to go right up the center. Cubie Guzzo retrieves it. And it's a ground ball up the center. Cowie Bangit, that's hit number 27 for him this season. Really found himself uh, at home in that spot. And that's going to be, I believe, against the snake. Like I just bunted it down the third base line. Not only did he move the runner, but he also got himself on first with no problem. Looks like Thrusty's going to try to do the same thing, but is it going to be into a fancy hit? No, it's going to be one. So Thrusty hits into a, bunts into a fielder's choice. With one, and it, it, is a, it is a whole bunch of bunts today. As that was, well, it moves around us to second and third, but now with Split P. Hammond, two outs. Swings at the first one. Swings at strike two. These uh, I'm, I'm a bit, bit, uh, bit confused by by these, uh, these these strategies. I understand Snake Quacker maybe bunting it over and getting on. Thirsty perhaps. Brent Buckley's bunt. I don't understand whatsoever. Hammond is going to pop this one up. Oh. And that will be it for the second inning in a very uh, peculiar and puzzling inning. Two runners stranded. And Doug Lumps, the catcher, starts things off here in the top of the third. First out is recorded. Hammond underneath it. Hammond uh, pitched on average six to seven innings per game. So that's respectable. His clip is just about one. One walk or hit per inning pitch. It's ERA 408, so we're pretty even on the ERA uh, front. And of course, he is 3 and 2 as far as the go in just as many starts as uh, Mr. Gorman. Six starts, so one no decision. He's going to get striking out Bonky Gorman, as we were saying. So that is strikeout number two for Mr. Hammond. That makes him 12 strikeouts on the season. Gets Stump Phillips swinging very mightily. Dribbles takes a bit of a hop right to Botai Harvey, and it's a 1 2 3 inning for two innings in a row. We head to the bottom of the third, and we go to the top of the order for the Tea Tartlers. Proper love of Tea Tartlers. Humpty oh, Pool led off with a single to start the first inning, and he looks like he's going to get even more than that. It's going to get right past Joe Nelly. And he's rounding first, going for two, sliding in with a double with ease. That is double number eight for Umpty Pool this season. And he is two for two today, bringing us to Crispy Yellow, hitting to the double play. Not uh, as easy of an option this time, of course, with uh, his compatriot Pool on second rather than first. He's going to smash that one. Is it going to find the gap? It's not going to hit over the wall, but it's going to find the gap, drop off the wall. It will bat in the first run, and Crispy Yellow is in with an RBI double. To make this one to nothing in favor of the T-Tartler. 
Moopy pound cake with no outs. He was walked in the first inning. He's going to hit it right to Stokely Hathaway. Should move uh, yellow to third, but it is out number one. Well, the T-Tartles bring us to Bowtie Harvey. That was Crispy Yellow's 15th RBI of the season. The difference maker right now, it is one to nothing. In favor of the T-Tartles. Really used just a good form. Uh, and he's going to strike out Bowtie Harvey. So two outs, Crispy Yellow is on third base. Any sort of uh, good contact from Cowie Bangit here. And that's going to be good contact. Yes, I was going to say with runners in scoring position, Bangit is batting 438. He's on with an RBI single. RBI number 16 for him, and it's two to nothing. He's two for two today, and here is Ainsley Snake Quacker. Batting 308. Oh, that that one off for a two and one count. Ball three, so three and one the count now. And that will be basically a fielder's choice to end the inning. So it does strand the one. However, Chicago take the lead by a score of two to nothing as we head in to the top of the fourth. One third of the way through this game, QB Guzzle starts things off facing split. Key Hammond, Guzzle batting 309 this season. At a one and two count, he uh, pops it high up into the air. Ren Busby, the center fielder, is right there, and that's out number one. These two teams really have just gone at each other with amazing uh, ferocity this series. It's a really fun game, fun series to watch. Chicago, of course, getting the win, breaking a seven game losing streak. Uh, so would love to uh, have a winning streak in the, in, to, to equally repeat about. That is gonna be high up into the air and that is gonna be to industry for a solo home run by Joe Nelly. To put the haberdashers within one. That is home run number two for Joe Nelly. He's batting 333. He's not found himself uh, starting as often. 21 at bats. That was number 23 for him, actually, as we do count the, uh, the first, didn't count the first and the second. Today, he is one for two with that home run. And here is Gauze Blacksmith, for a man who knows about hitting home runs. He's already worked himself into a one and two count. Gauze Blacksmith, six home runs this season so far. And he's going to strike out. I believe that was looking. So that's strikeout number three for Hammond. And with two outs, it brings up Boob Jenna. Batting 343. Gets it high into the air. And Better Thrust is right there before the warning track. To make the catch. So a Joe Nelly home run. Gets the haberdashers only within one here. It's still two to one. And we start the bottom of the fourth with better thrusty, the left fielder who just made that out. He's going to hit it on the first pitch. Right to cause blacksmith. Steps on the bag. It is out number one. Ren Bugby is all for one today. Again, that bit of a uh, bunting debacle we saw in the second inning. I suppose if we uh, see that Steve Tyler's getting a nice win as he pops it up into foul territory, caught by Doug Lumps. I suppose if, it, uh, if it's a nice, comfortable win for Chicago today, then maybe we won't have to think about it too much, but you have to wonder if that's going to be potentially uh, something to come back and haunt the DT title as well. Hammond uh, ends the inning again by grounding that one out, so it'll be top of the order for the bottom of the fifth. But right now, it is the top of the fifth, and Trevor Knockmore, all for one today. Plus the home run from Joe Nelly, brought to you by industry brand, colognes, fragrances, and perfumes. Because why would you want to smell like anything in the world when you can smell like the clean, fresh smen smell, smell, scent, smell of industry? Found wherever smells are sold. Trevor Knockmore grounds it out for out number one, and this brings up Stokely Hathaway. Really the 
bottom of the the bottom half of the haberdasher order has not do has not done anything today. Uh, as you can see by Hathaway registering out number two. This is Doug Lumps. The catcher Lumps is only batting 220. Two and two the count. And Hammond very economical with his pitches. A bit more than 10 per inning as I can uh, do the quick math. He does average about nine, nine to ten pitches per inning. He does walk Doug Lumps, so uh, bringing up the pitcher spot, Vonky Gorman. Of course, Gorman struck out in the third inning. Going to be a steal attempt. I don't know why they even tried to do that because uh, it was very much in time. Cowie Bang it able to make the sweep and get Doug Lumps, the catcher, who. Catchers aren't exactly known for stealing bases, I, I must admit, but uh, so be it. And we head to the bottom of the fifth, so I, I, I will not judge the uh, Haberdashers for their, uh, their strategic play there. And that's going to drop into the corner. Hello, that is going to be extra bases for Umpty Pool. A second double for him. He is three for three today. A single and two doubles. And he now allows Crispy Yellow to try to bat him around again. Uh, not by that, not by that method. That is, uh, that is popping up high into the air and shallow center field. Who he'll be goozled. So it means Umpty Pool has to get back to second base and not tag up. It's uh, far too uh, risky. Bring up Movie Palm Cake. All for one. He walked in first. And he grounded out, but he's going to bat home. Umpty Pool with this one, that's going to land right short of the wall. It's going to bounce into it. He's in with a double, and it is three to one. To the teetotalers. RBI number 10 for a movie pound cake this season. And Bowtie Harvey not having the best of days. Well, that's going to... He doesn't make great contact of it, but it does drop short of Joe Nelly, so he's on with a single and runners around the corners with one out. That's the first hit of the day for Bowtie Harvey. He'll take what he can get at this point. Kind of dried up a bit. However, Cowie, bang it, can he? Oh. No, it's going to be just at the wall. What an over-the-shoulder catch from Stump Phillips. However, it sacrifices. Movie pound cake home. Four to one on the sacrifice fly. And now instantly snake whacker. With two outs, bottom of the fifth is right to Trevor Knockmore, and that will do it. So it does strand the one, but the T-Toddlers put another two on the board, four to one, going into the top of the sixth, and the pitcher, Bunky Gorman, is going to be, uh, that's going to be it for today. It's going to be Moss Words coming in as a, uh, as a pinch hitter. Off the plate, inside. One and one the count. Warts has only played 21 has played 21 games so far this season. Batting 367, but just cannot find himself regularly enough. He, at first base with God's Blacksmith there. I mean perhaps a, a good at bat here with a, a count full. Fouls that one off. And he's going to walk, so Moss Wirtz. Will walk. And bring us to the top of the order of Stump. Phillips. So Bunky Gorman uh, gives the Haberdashers five good innings. Four to one. Not certain they would consider them good innings, I guess, but uh, that Phillips is going to pop that one up and out number one. It keeps uh, Wurtz on first. And this is Hubie Guzzo. He was over two today. He didn't strike out in the first. Haberdashers will have to go to their bullpen. I imagine we might see Thermos Hearn, perhaps Ezemiah Denov. They also have Wash Muscles as an option. And that's going to be the daughter's fancy dance to end the inning. So all for three for Mr. Guzel. And it will be Ezemiah Denov coming in as the pitcher for New York.
Fancy Dan Double Play brought to you by Fancy Dan for the products with more pop in your clock with Fancy Dan. Isamaya Deneau, a 595 ERA. He's, he's made appearances in 12 games so far. He's going to get... Well, that was better Thirsty popping up for out number one, his Ren Bugby. Bugby 0 for 2 as well, so the bottom three in the order are, uh, are completely blanking themselves so far. Bugby is going to be 0 for 3 as well, as that goes right to Hoopy Goozle. And so far, so good for Azamai Denov. Again, he's pitched 19 and 2 thirds innings so far this season. Across 12 games. And that seems to be an error at first, so that will bring Umpty Pool. So the uh, so Split P Hammond will reach on an error. And we continue the inning. So with one on, two out. Umpty Pool has been just absolutely unstoppable today. Let's do it again. How about another single for Mr. Pool? Bottom of the sixth, he is four for four today. And that is fancy Dan material, I must say. Uh, finest dandy material, but my, my goodness me. Not fancy damn material, but fine, uh, finest dandy. That is, that is the kind of thing to be a dandy of the day. I make sure that I don't uh, sponsor the wrong people. Have my job done. And he's going to get Chris Yellow striking out, so Denove. Keeps it at 4 to 1, puts a 0 on the board. And as we head to the top of the 7th, Split P. Hammond remains in this game. Joe Nelly gets on with a single. That's his second hit for the day. He had a home run in the top of the fourth. Bring up Gauze Blacksmith yet to get on base today. He is batting 370, however. And it looks like he's going to hit into a fancy Dan! Double play! 6-4-3 for, for those of you scoring it in your notepads. With Boob Jenna. Boob Jenna's gonna pop that one. A bit disrespectful to call a pop-up. It actually did have some velocity and some distance to it. To the warning track ran Bugby. A 1-2-3 inning. And the t -tartlers. Head to the plate through Moopy Pound Cake. Inside. Fancy Dan Double Play brought to you by Fancy Dan Follicle Products. Put more fuff in your quaff with Fancy Dan and their assortment of crimping powders, styling salves, sculpting epoxies, and other hair treatment tonics. Why be a Mitchell when you could be a Fancy Dan? Moopy Pound Cake's going to be on with a single. Bring up Bowtie Harvey, who had his first hit of the game. His last at bat it was a single in the bottom of the fifth. He's going to pop that one up. I think they're going to have to call for it. Host Oakley halfway waves off the outfielders and gets it in shallow center. With one out, it's how we bang it. I must say. And Bang it's going to hit it right to Claus Blacksmith, who will step on the bag for out number two. Now we Bang it is uh, bat down in two of those four runs today. He is at 17 RBIs for the T-Tacklers. Ainsley Snake Whacker, a single in the second. On a uh, bit of a bunt mishap, he's going to fly that one out to Kubi Guzzle. And that will do it for the inning. So we head to the top of the eighth. And it looks like Nevada Escargo is coming in for Ainsley Snakewacker. So a bit of a defensive maneuver. As Spiffy Hammond stays on the uh, on the mound for the t -tartlers. This is an outstanding performance for him. I say that as he does walk Trevor Knockmore, so that is the first time he'll be on base for the day. Brings up Stokely Hathaway, so perhaps we're getting a bit to the uh, high end of Hammond's uh, 
day that is high up into the air. Is it far enough? I would hope not. It's going to be into the glove of Rand Bugby. And I think that might have to be a bit of a signal to Mr. Uh, to the manager of the tea turtles to maybe uh, go to your bullpen. And sure enough, it will be Jepson Schwandwich. So the closing pitcher is going to be asked to get five outs today. Well, he does one on the first one, gets Doug Lumps popping out on the first pitch. So Justin Schwandwich. And it looks like Versi Moore coming in for Nevada Escargo. Uh, Nevada Escargo, not for Escargo, for uh, Esemaya Denov, excuse me. Versi Moore, the center fielder, 361. I think it's just a matter of there's just too many uh, powerful outfielders. For the, uh, well, he's going to be on with a single. And they head to the top of the order with two outs. Dump Phillips is going to find the gap, and this might be a bit of a rally for the Dashes. They're going to send two home, and it is a two-run double for Stump Phillips. The RBI leader of the Continental League has now just put in, batted, batted in, runs, uh, runs 27 and 28. Hubie Guzzo will ground it out to end that, and Delmar Uptown. will take the mound. So Delmar Uptown, the closing pitcher for the Haberdashers as well. And on the first pitch, that is out number one. To better thrusty, and they continue to uh, have a bit of a, a bit of an issue. Well, uh, Ren Bugby is up to bat now, and it's four to three. Delma uptown has two saves again, not a save opportunity, but that is going to drop for a fair ball, and it's going to be chased by Joe Nelly. It'll be a double. No, it will be a triple. Ren Bugby gets in with a triple. Well, that's his first hit of the game. And that is triple number one for him on the season. Jepson Schwan, which is going to come out. For Dim Barron, who's batting 267. One out. That is going to be right to... Trevor Knockmore, and they go with the killer choice. They get Bugby out at home. So, two outs. Here is Umpty Pool. Not the person you really want to see again. And oh, goodness me, five for five for Mr. Umpty Pool. Well, I must say, that is a single. That is an outstanding day for Mr. Umpty Pool. Five for five. Three singles, two doubles. And Crispy Yellow is going to hit it right to Knockmore. To the, to the top of the ninth, Derry Hamper. Derry Hamper coming in to get a save. He's already had two, two saves. He's not the closer for the T Tartalus. However, he seems to have been the, uh, the chosen one to get it these days. He's got an ERA of 7.62, so isn't that fantastic? Five strikeouts. He's going to get out number one. Out number one is Joe Nelly. So two saves so far this season for Derry Hamper. He's only showed up in eight games. He's pitched 13 innings in total. So this is a chance to get a save opportunity for him to get save number three. He's only strikeout five in those eight games, in those 13 innings. Oz Blacksmith making him work for it. Blacksmith might win that battle. No, he doesn't. What a throw by Bowtie Harvey. To get the get the uh, the runner at first. Well the T Tottlers are one out away from taking this series two games to one. And a bit of confidence. That is it as easy as you'll get 
To end the game, the Chicago Teetotalers take the win by a final score of 3 to 4 over the New York Haberdashers. The official box score of that, the New York Haberdashers, 3 runs, 5 hits, 1 error. Chicago Teetotalers, 4 runs, 13 hits without an error. That will, of course, move Chicago to 12 and 15. Uh, currently, as my statistics show me, that puts them solidly into fourth place in the Continental League. Uh, still many games behind the league leading. The league leading New Ohio Debonairs. I think that's seven and a half as my math looks to see. Uh, New York, that puts them uh, only two games behind New York, who dropped to 14 and 13. So still above 500. Uh, however, the T-Totlers, two wins in a row for them. After going seven losses in a row, that is quite the accomplishment to, uh, to write home about. And it is definitely on the back of Cowie Bangett today, I think. An umpty pool, most certainly. Five for five today. Uh, the winning pitch-up is Split P. Hammond. And Hammond does go... I believe he will improve to 4 and 2. Whereas Bonky Gorman, the, the loss, puts him down to 2 and 4. Derry Hamper gets saved number 3 for coming in in the ninth to get the 3 outs necessary. Uh, very good day from Slithy Hammond, going 7 and a third. Only uh, allowing 3 hits, striking out as many as he's hit. Outstanding, just a home run being one of those hits. <laughs> so we do thank our friends at the Honeybee Tobacco Company. Fine hand-rolled cigarettes grown in the fabled tobacco roads of the Carolinas. For today's Finest Dandies of the Day, they sponsor the Finest Dandies of the Day uh, across the entire Continental League for the entire 1920 season. The third Finest Dandy of the Day, Joe Nelly, hitting home run number two for himself today. Two for four on the day, he got the home run that kicked off the scoring for the New York Haberdashers in the, my notes believe it says is the fourth inning. Second finest dandy, Moopy Pound Cake. Two for three with a double and an RBI. Good to see him have a good batting day as well. But who else could it be? Umpty Pool. Five for five. Two doubles, three singles, two runs. Oh, did he even bat? I don't think he batted in a single run. I think he led off so many times that he just got on base and let other people do the work for him. So Umpty Pool getting a complimentary carton of honeyweed cigarettes. He is our finest dandy of the day, brought to you by the Honeyweed Tobacco Company, humbly requesting, humbly requesting that you smoke wheat every day. Well, that concludes the series between the New York Haberdashers and the Chicago Teetotalers. My goodness, they always put together a great, a great games to watch if you're if you're a neutral, uh, and of course if you're on the winning end, it's even better. So the Teetotalers enjoy a good win today here at Rostein Park. Uh, they remain home. They have a, a, a day off tomorrow. Then they welcome Amalgamated Baseball Holdings in two days' time. For a three-game series. New York gets to head home tomorrow. Uh, they have a travel day tomorrow, but they welcome the Boston Ruffians to the Rockefeller Oval on the 15th, just as Chicago start their series. Uh, but uh, the both teams get to enjoy a, t a day off uh, travel for New York, some recouping for Chicago, maybe figuring out how they can keep this mojo alive. Perhaps a seven-game a seven game loss. Losing streak can be uh, comforted with a, a bit of a winning streak. They're two ahead at the moment, and Amalgamated Baseball Holdings are struggling at the moment, so that could be possible. It's always a possibility, but of course, the only way to find out is to listen right here on WMAQ. So I am Hubba Baloney. I bid you a good evening. Hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. And we encourage you to come out to the Rothstein Park for the next series where Amalgamated Baseball Holdings come to town. But we head back to the music. I bid you good night, and I tell you, stay dry, everybody. <laughs>